Guild leans into the quirky with the 60s inspired surf liner. We're going to break it down, tell you what it's all about. So stick around. Hey, you're watching Alamo Music TV. My name is Chris McKee. And I'm Cooper Greenberg. We're here with Alamo Music Center in San Antonio, Texas. You can find us online at alamomusic.com. And if you're new to the channel, subscribe, turn on notifications, and like our videos. If you want to support the channel, visit our Spring Store link below for custom swag. And check out our podcast, The Fretboard Confessional, wherever you get your podcasts. So Guild's electrics have tended to be odd. You yeah. know, they've, they've kind of embraced this, we're going to be different aesthetic. Yeah. And kind of moving beyond aesthetic. Like even Fender will do some quirky, weird stuff from now, uh, now and then. But the formula is generally still Strat, Jazz, Master, Telly. Whereas Guild is going with both a weird, quirky, yeah. hipster type aesthetic with the look and also the controls of the guitar. Yeah. That's very interesting. So this is the Surfliner, and there's two versions of this guitar now, right? There are three versions. Three versions now. of this yeah. guitar. Yeah, so they have like the normal um, single coil configuration. Mm -hmm. This is the HH, HH, okay, haha. Haha. -ha. This is the haha -ha version. And then um, when and I was- And then there's a Haas. There's that Haas, and that's the deluxe. <laughs> um, Haas avocados, beaches of California. You know, I'm determined, kind of together, we're yeah. gonna change the vernacular in the industry. Yeah. yeah, and people are going to be calling it the s, yeah, or the ha ha, or either the hoss or the sh. It's snake jazz. <laughs> it's just all about the snake jazz. What kind um, of guitar are you playing? The sh. We got that sh. But um, <laughs> when I was at Nam, I got to play the new deluxes. I'm yeah. very excited for those to come in. They're on order. But we got these in first. These are the HH models. This is in Shoreline Mist, mm. um, and I think that Guild has the right idea and it's because at that show all kinds of young uh, guitar companies all over the place and you've seen it it's not anything new but every single one has their s style their t yes. style and their j style and this is something a little different <laughs> just i love the efforts to not get sued yeah it's s style we got the s style yeah so Luckily, I mean, the Starfires, people know about the Starfires. We've talked about them on here. They're semi-hollows. But they've had all kinds of iterations of solid body guitars, Poleras, all that stuff. Right. This is, I think, a entry into the offset wars of the 2020s because every hip cat on the block down in L.A. is playing a jazz master. And I think they're trying to add something new at the price of a squire, really, mm -hmm. yeah. you know, but make it a little different and some kind of that stands out. And I think that they've done well. Um, with the HH model, obviously, it's a little heavier tone and all that. I'm, I am excited for the deluxe, but this kind of has the articulation and, you know, bright pop that I think a lot of these indie sort of offset playing bands kind of want, so. Well, let's talk about the specs here. So the HaHa -ha is set up with HB2 pickups mm -hmm. from Guild in both the neck and the bridge position. And they're using Alnico 2 magnets to have a warmer path style tone mm -hmm. that's vintage. But you also talked about it having like some chime to it. Yeah. So do you think it kind of lives in both worlds a little bit? I think so. I mean, you do have that. Look at that. Did you just break the guitar? I. I'm breaking them all today. Um, so you can split them, but I do think it was um, chimey enough. Like it, it didn't, didn't, I only played on clean tones during the demo. It did not have any of the muddiness that I kind of associate, especially with lower priced humbuckers. Yeah. I think that's the, um, the kind of downside of Epiphone stuff, some of the It's the common stuff. experience. Most yeah. oh, most lower price on buckers are muddy. Well, yeah. single coils too. So generally yeah. the difference, if you really want to break it down, is uh, better pickups tend to have more articulation and cheaper pickups tend to not have very good articulation. Yeah. So, um, yeah, I think these, these sound really nice. They have interesting switching that yeah. takes you to the arcade a little bit. It, it is interesting. So basically, you've got two switches that turn either pickup on or off. Yeah. So you can have both on, both off, one, one on, on, one yeah. off, neither on. Yeah. It's interesting. Which, if you're going to do the Tom Morello thing, I guess. Yeah. 
So it, it's an interesting setup, and I don't know. I'm curious how you felt. It, to me, if there's a criticism, I don't like the switches, and I think it is different for different sake. But maybe it's better to yeah. have that kind of so. Switching? I show this to Casey, our guitar tech in house, who has extremely strong opinions on everything. Oh yeah, um, we need to have him on the podcast just so he can absolutely. talk smack about yeah, stuff. Yeah, no, he is a wealth of knowledge. But he saw this and kind of was like, "Oh, that's interesting," but also said it's probably more stable than you know having a little three way toggle switch. Because I will say, there is no way if both of these are off, they're going to strum down and like. Hit them like I just That's touched true. it. That's right true. They're now. low profile. Yeah, so it's like a concerted effort to make sure this is on. The only part that I could see that would be tough is if I am, if I've got the bridge off and the neck on, and I want to kick into a solo, I'm two finger hitting those or going in mute for a second. You know, like yeah. it's it's tough because on a strat on anything else with the toggle switch, you just throw it all the way down. Right. Um, but I also think that it's kind of interesting, and some people might like that, especially if you're not in the habit of like, I gotta switch pickups in the middle of a song really fast on the one. Um, you know, it's not that big of a deal to just switch them on and off. But yeah. it is something to be uh, mindful of if you're looking at this guitar. I also like that it's, you know, string through body, mm -hmm. very stable as far as the setup here with the bolt-on neck, so you're not going to be dealing with a lot of intonation issues. Straight string pull-up at the headstock, and it's back tilted so you don't have the string tree. So they're doing a lot of really small, minor things that if you know, you know, like yeah. particularly if you've ever if you've ever played with a vintage Strat bent a note, you know what I'm talking about. There's yeah. benefits to the setup, both from like the Tele World and some other things that other companies have done. Yeah. So you put it through its paces. We're going to take a listen, mostly clean tones, and hear kind of that chime warmth that yeah. they're accomplishing with these pickups. You will hear it though, especially on the bridge with the humbucker. Like even it super clean, it's pushing it. It is a, a substantial tone. So check it out. So there you have it. It is the Guild Surfliner Haha, -ha, or HH, in Shoreline Mist. I'm curious which shoreline has this color of mist, but that's cool. Um, pretty cool, quirky guitar. Yeah. I like it. It is offset. It, there, there is some jazz master to it, but they've put the little horn here and done some other it's unique nice things. Carved down there. Yeah. I think so. I mentioned that this is around Squire price. Some Squires, not all Squires, and that's not a fair comparison because there's not just one under $500 guitar out there. Right. But this one is at $499 currently. 
the deluxes I think are six ninety nine. Mm-hmm. Um, so it, they're making a case for the very crowded market that we've been talking about. That it is a well under a thousand dollars, sometimes under five hundred dollar by one dollar. Um, you know, it's a nice guitar, and I think that there is a little more thought put into it, a little bit more of a unique vibe. Um, I did meet with some guys at NAMM that were showing me these guitars, some of the other acoustics that are coming out. Um, They are really cool people that are interested in making something unique and different, and they're genuinely excited about it. It's not just like, yeah, we need a solid body electric, and everybody likes offsets, let's just make something. So um, if, if you're watching Caleb and Ben, those are my guys now, and I really enjoyed all the stuff that I saw. So I think that, especially with the deluxes, and I feel bad I keep teasing these, but I think more of these surf liners are going to find their places in young bands, bands that are, I mean, this looks offset and kind of beachy, but it's a pretty slick, more heavy-duty looking guitar to me that I think could be heavier music, some heavy rock and roll, yeah. little metal. Um, but yeah, the I think all the Surfliner stuff is going to find um, a certain market that's really going to enjoy it. So. Well, I think the best thing it has going for, for it is that it's different. Yeah. You know, so hopefully it stands out in the market, uh, but in a good way. You mm-hmm. could be quirky and bad. This is quirky and good. The fit and finish on it is fantastic. Um, the fretwork is great. It feels great. Everything seems rock solid. Um, there's some cool, like, little hardware parts, like... The G in the neck plate is yeah, cool and cool. different. Um, so yeah, I really dig it. I do have an interesting thing for Caleb and Ben. Ben, where is this guitar made? And I say that only because we were talking about this before we shot the video. It doesn't say anywhere. So we've got the surf liner on the back of the headstock with the serial number. It doesn't say where it's made. And what I what I told Cooper and and Josh behind the camera is. I can't think of anything at all, like guitar or otherwise, that I've ever held that didn't say where it was built. And I wonder if this is just an early version that we got that missed that, which makes it collectible. This is now worth three times as much. very collectible. I think (laughs) if you don't see it on there, it was forged in the fires of Mordor. Mordor. (laughs) Um, this is a Mount Doom what? signature. One guitar yeah. to find them. Yeah. Drag them into the dark and bind them. I'm a nerd. Um, yeah, no, it's a cool guitar. I like, the, we were talking about too, like the the font they've used on the knobs is cool. It's just a cool guitar. Um, yeah. I'm excited to get the hands on the deluxe too because the trim that they have on there is really cool and I like rosewood. Yeah. You know, so. And the colors are good. I, I think yeah. that they're, Another thing is, yeah, everybody's got their S, T, J, and then they make them in three-tone sunburst and candy apple red yeah. and Lake Placid blue, and they're doing something, like they all have kind of these metallic finishes that are a little off the beaten path and actually trying to offer something that's like not just a copy of some famous guitar. You know, it's, it's nice. I'm curious what the future holds, just because you and I both know now the Yamaha owns Cordoba Music Group. Yes. Which includes Guild. Mm-hmm. And Yamaha is already making some of our favorite new guitars with Rev Stars, and we're big fans of the Pacifica. And I think as these two companies combine, because they're both making products we like, yeah. that there could be really exciting things coming down the pipe. Yeah. The next Coachella, you're not going to see any more Jazz Masters. You're going to be seeing Surf Liners and Rev Stars, which is totally fine with me. You should do that for the channel. Coachella? Yeah, the next Coachella. Yeah. yeah. Can we have Alamo Music page so we can go to Coachella? Anyways, if you want more information about this guitar, you can find it on our website at alamomusic.com. And if you've seen the other surf liners online, um, we do have them on order, but you can get in line with us. We're going to be making videos on them. And if we don't get a certain color you want, let us know and we'll get that for you. Caleb will hand deliver it. Yeah, absolutely. I'd love to get him down here. 
<laughs> Anyways. Yeah, so check it out on the website. You can chat with someone, find out more information about these guitars. Also, when the other ones are coming in, if you'd like to place a pre-order. And if you are new to our channel and you're not sure if this is the right guitar for you, we help with that too. We do all these videos for that purpose to help you find the best guitar. Sometimes it's something the quirky off the beaten path. And if you like that, make sure that you subscribe, turn on notifications, like the videos, and comment on this one and let us know what you think about the Surfliner guitars that are coming out from Guild. I'm fans, uh, I'm a fan of Guild. I like their stuff and I like the quirkiness. So now you know what I think. So let us know in the comments below and keep coming back and we'll see you next time. <laughs>